Hey everybody, it's Brian Heater with Engadget. Uh, we are back, I am back, everybody's back. Bree is back, Bree was here last year. Um, we didn't drive him away. He managed to take a break in his busy schedule. Bree Pettis, CEO of MakerBot, thank you for joining us. It is, you know, we look forward to coming to CES every year and part of it is we get to hang out with you and, get, and, and talk about what's happening. No, no, no party at, uh, at the Pinball Museum this year though. Oh no, we did it last night. Oh, wait, where's, where's my invite? Dude, oh, man. we do it every year. You're okay. automatically All invited. right, fair enough. Well, I mean, I, have, you, have you, so that you got a chance game. to party. That driving game. Okay. I haven't been there yet, I haven't been there yet. Oh, uh, dude. I mean, not this year. Let's just go. I said. There's this game at the, at the Pinball Hall of Fame here yeah. in Las Vegas. This is my favorite thing to do outside of hanging out at CES. Yeah. The Pinball Hall of Fame is just an amazing place full of basically every single pinball game ever yeah. and a bunch of super early arcade yeah. games. And yeah. they've got this arcade game from the late 60s that's a, that's a, it's a driving game that's, that's a, it's like, it, there's actual real cars on tracks and you have to, oh, you yeah, have yeah, yeah, I, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I really can't do it justice. You just have to I go know to what you're talking about. That's a that's a good example of real world objects yeah. in a virtual experience. And all the every quarter you put into those machines, all the all, they, everything you put in there all goes to charity. It's such a great Do they thing. accept Bitcoin because I'm only paying for things at Bitcoin now? You know, I bet you could probably they're a little bit, you know, pinball. They probably yeah. you know, then you yeah. might maybe the, the new like they're kinda of trying to come out with hardware bitcoins, yep. I bet you they did yep. that. Yep. Have, have you I, have you seen any really cool 3D printed pinball machine parts? Because we had like uh, we went to Ben Heck's place, and I'm sure you know Ben oh, yeah. and Madison, and he's like he's building his own pinball machine. I mean that seems that to me seems like a really cool real world application. Like you've got a really old machine, you can't get that part anymore. Print it out. There are actually a bunch of pinball pinball parts on Thingiverse, as you would imagine, yeah. flippers and the little like things because you just you have to make them from scratch. It's, a, it's an industry that's, they don't make those old machines anymore. So yeah. there's really no other option. You got to use your MakerBot and make this stuff up. Uh, so you had, you had a little bit of a chance to, I don't know if wind down's the right word, but uh, maybe blow off some steam last night. Have you, have you stopped at all this show? Have you, have you smelled the roses? Have you checked out the, uh, the Bitcoin companies in South Hall? You know, it's, it's interesting. We started at CES, this is our fifth CES, and we started as the first 3D printer company here, and really the only 3D company for years. And when we started, I won a booth in a startup battle in New York, and... So you didn't even, you didn't even have the money to pay for it? We didn't have the money wow. to pay for it. Yeah. And, and we had a booth in the way back of South Hall, and it's actually one of the, 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 one of the pieces of advice I have for people visiting here, is go to the back of the South Hall, see the things that are there. Yeah. Half of those things will not exist in six months, but a couple of those are going to be the thing that move up the hall and become what's next. The, sto the story, like the real story of the show is, was, is in the way back. Well, that's where the entrepreneurs are. Yeah. And, and actually, CES is, it makes those, most, those booths pretty affordable because they want to make sure entrepreneurs come here. And for us, it was actually, that first year was a huge accelerant. Yeah. Just doing well. So you're, so you're, in, you're in South Hall, but it's a, I mean, it's, a, it's a very different experience right now. You're in the 3D printer area, and, and I've got to ask you, like, going from five years ago, again, when you were the, the sole representative of the technology, to a point where, you know, you walk around, there's, there's some really big booths, I mean, Stratus, who obviously, you guys are now part of the family, yep. and, and 3D Systems, and um, uh, all of these, like, really huge booths out there, a lot of smaller startups. Um, is, is it, what, is, is it harder? Is, I mean, obviously, you got a bigger presence out there, but now that there are more companies, now that there's more competition, is it harder uh, getting people excited about your company and your product specifically? You know, we, uh, we're a couple steps ahead. You know, this is our fifth generation technology. This thing is just gorgeous. It's rock solid. We've got, it's, you know, our last set of machines, we really nailed the technology and it's just rock solid. Now we added features. We've got the three and a half inch display. We've got this awesome, you know, bigger build volume, smart extruder. There's a camera in there so you can you know, mo monitor all your... Can I snap the extruder off? Is that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do this? Just pull it off. It's on the, on the back there. Keep talking. Make this interesting while I snap <laughs> this extruder off. So well, the smart extruder is cool because it will, if you, if you run out of filament, You'll be able to. Uh, it'll just send you a message to your phone, letting you know. Just that pull it straight off. Me. Yeah, pull it back. Pull it back. Oh no, there's a little component on the back. You know what? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, let's. Do it. Let's do it. Okay. So let me show yeah. You. So, 
Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, pl there we go. So it's f fully magnetic. Yeah. 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 All right. So there's a little there's smarts in here. And smarts. What is? What, what, <laughs> there's a what, PCB what in there and electronics. There's sensors yeah. in there that let you know if you run out of filament. So and you it, don't have to scrap a, a, a project if you run out of Yeah, yeah. Plastic. It literally goes, I ran out of filament. I'm going to go face the corner. Yeah. And it sends you a message saying, feed me. You, you, get, you get a push, a push message a on push your smart device. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, we, we, did, notice, we, we did notice that. Uh, you know, we, I think we, we, we were. We were wo Can you put the tube inside oh, there? Sure. I'm kind of obsessed with it looking good. Thank you. Uh, well, fine. Yeah. All right. <laughs> CES. CES, it's almost over. So there's a couple of things here that's just so cool. Yeah. There's a bunch of sensors, and then it, we've re-engineered it. So there's this whole field called rheology, which is the field of how plastics, uh, the fluidity of plastics. And there's a lot of, there's just, a, there, are, there are years of work that are in this little thing. So this is, I, I, you, you had said at, uh, the keynote, congratulations, by the way, on, on getting a keynote. You had said at the keynote that um, I think it might have been the, thank you, Joe. I think it might have been the mini that you were speaking about specifically, but that that was something that you had been working on from the beginning. So this isn't, I mean, it seems like this isn't really an instance of, um, you know, just yearly iterations, but you, you guys are juggling a lot of balls right now, and you guys have pretty kind of far off products planned. You know, all of our the previous, all the previous 3D printers we've made all had a microcontroller in them, and we're kind of the equivalent of like a, a flip phone. With the the electronics we have inside here, and the connectivity and the network and capabilities, we've shifted. It's as big a jump as from a, a, a candy bar phone to like a smartphone. Well, that I mean, that's an interesting analogy, and I don't know how far we can take this. Um, but you know, if we are talking about smartphones, we're we're talking about like a product as a platform. That's right, exactly. So is this, are, is you got this, it. Are, I, I don't want to say future proof, but you know, is this, are we going to see more functionality for this moving ahead? Oh man, so that's, we are, we do, we do, you know, we do regular firmware and software updates that make our 3D printers, our machines yeah. more powerful. You know, with a digitizer, we launched it, the MakerBot digitizer, our desktop 3D scanner, the MakerBot digitizer software, was good, you could put the object on the digitizer platform, it would scan it. Then about a month and a half ago, we dropped a new software update, now you can put it on there, and then you can turn it on its side, scan it again, it'll merge the scan. Improves the quality of the machine immensely with a software update, we love doing that. So, I mean, you know, we, we, were, talking about, uh, we were talking about ecosystem last year. Yeah. Um, you, you couldn't give too much away, and you know, when, when South by Southwest rolled around, it, it made a lot more sense. Uh, the digitizer is definitely a big part of that. Uh, you've got Thingiverse, um, you've got uh, you've got apps now. You've got mobile apps now. A trio yeah. of mobile apps, and it's and it's so cool. Like you can basically start a print from your phone and and monitor it remotely. And we've got an application called MakerBot Print Shop, which is a design tool that's just make that anybody can use. Like your qualifications for being a designer are can you type. You know, you can make really cool signs, and you can make really cool bracelets, and it's one of those things that uh, I can't wait to see what people do with it. It's just going to be so much fun. I, I want to ask you about the, the the storefront you launched as well. That was that was um, definitely an interesting announcement, given um, that at least from a software perspective, um, you know, MakerBot's been a very very open company. You know, you've been making all the money on the hardware end, uh, and you have this. Tremendous resource. I mean, far and away the biggest resource of these uh, 3D models for, for, for printing. Um, why does it make sense to to offer up, you know, premium store? And, and why will people are people actually going to start paying money for these things when they can just download all these other things for free? Here's the here's the reasoning behind that. When you when you bought our last generation of printers, you got an SD card with it, and it had a couple models on it. I kept meeting people who were who were not engineers, who were not industrial designers, who were architects, who'd bought this powerful machine, this powerful 3D yeah. printer, and what they were doing with it is they were printing the test ob objects off. And there's a Mr. Jaws, which is like a little shark that holds oh. your chip bags closed. There's a comb, there's a bracelet, and a, and a, uh, a chain. And there were people who were just 
they bought the, the, a MakerBot and they were just making all the test objects all the time. And I, and I realized that for a whole group of people, their first step into 3D printing, they want it to be something where they just enjoy making the things. And so we had, we, I felt a calling to make just great, great models that people can make. And, and so I hired a team. I hired an awesome creative team, MakerBot Studio. And the MakerBot Studio, they make just gorgeous models that are made to be 3D printed on a MakerBot. And to kind of justify that expense, I wanted to charge a little bit so that we could show that this is something that has value. And so we, we launched six collections, and these are just super sweet collectibles. Can, can people, when we were at the, the keynote, we got this adorable little Brie. I wish I had brought it with me, adorable <laughs> little, little Brie toy. Is that a, that's a limited edition only thing? You know, we're going to, well, um, I think we have, that's, a, that's part of a set called Around Town, which is a group of small people that are all this big. You know, they're actually, that's actually life size in the Around Town collectible set. And um, there's like a bike repairman and, a, and all this kind of stuff. We have to, we're going to have to add that into that collection. So, 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 so ecosystem, uh, you know, and, and one of the things that you, you guys have been making great efforts to do, um, particularly over the past year, was uh, find a way to help people actually create things to be printed. So, yes. you know, forever, you guys have had Thingiverse. People have been able to use other people's products. Um, there's a digitizer now. so. You know, objects under a certain size, you, you can scan those, you can print those out, you've got the app now. But I'm, um, and, 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 you know, we've seen a few solutions and attempts at solutions from other companies to create super user friendly 3D modeling software. So, you know, people who don't know CAD are able to do this. Is that, is that just something that's just, at least at this point, just much too hard to do well? You know, what, what we want to do is we want to we wanna light up the pleasure centers in your brain. And one of the ways that we do that is by making it easy for you to be creative. Because when you make something, you feel good. You feel proud. You get to show it to people. You can give it to them because you have the machine that can make more. And it's, uh, and, and we want, like, this is, this is a machine that makes you happy because it allows you to be creative. And the, bar the threshold, the barrier to entry is so low now that, that you really can't complain, like, you can't, you can't say I can't be creative anymore. You know, there's a whole world of people out there that were told in first grade they couldn't draw and gave up being creative. And what we're telling the world is you can. Yeah. Unlock your creativity, unleash it, show the world what happens when you connect your passion to, uh, to a MakerBot. You know, I had a guy at the booth yesterday who came over and was like, yeah, but what am I going to make with it? And I said, well, what are you into? What's your passion and what do you, what's your hobby? And he said, well, I have a Brickland. This is a really, this is a, a car company that basically failed, kind of like DeLorean. And there are only 2,000 were made. They're gullwing cars, they're really- If you can really say that DeLorean failed, I mean, let's be honest. I have one, I yeah. love them. I love did DeLoreans. You, I oh, you know, there was, there was a slide in the presentation with the DeLorean yeah. packed out, so I did not realize that was yours. That's my DeLorean. I love it. Um, but for him, he's in this community of 2,800 people who bought the 2,800 Bricklands. And I said, well, what do you need? And he said, there's a, a stereo knob yeah. that was made for this car that was not a regular knob. That you can't just go and get another knob. It, when it breaks, it's gone. And I basically, and, and the light bulb goes on over the guy's head, and he realized that he could be that guy in his community that makes that knob, and all that community of Brooklyn owners win too, because he gets to share that, and now that knob is no longer out of stock. It's it's really interesting because I mean you know we were we were talking about that at the top of the segment but it's really interesting this idea of obsolescence being a factor in what's what's driving people towards these towards these uh, devices. Yeah, I um I just I just had an interview with uh, a Japanese newspaper, and one of the things I'm excited for is when the Japanese people, when 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 we go big in Japan uh -huh. because. I lived there in 1992. Is 3D print, printing not quite, it hasn't taken hold of in Japan yet? Not yet. Okay. And I cannot wait. I'm kind of shocked to hear that. Because, you know, in, in, Japanese people work really hard, and then they have a hobby. Yeah. And, you know, I fell in love with banjo playing in Japan because I would go to this bar in Japan where people, where people would play uh, bluegrass music, and they had studied Earl Scruggs and then kept going. And when, 
the Japanese people get a hold of this and they apply their hobby yeah. mentality to it, their passion. They don't hold back, man. Japanese like, whiskey is really good, by the way. I, I mean, believe that's, it. That's a good example of you know buying up Scotch companies and producing really good stuff. I mean, they're gonna like. I, I also love. Um, I love boom boxes from 1983. That was the golden year of boom boxes. The Japanese put out all these boom boxes. They were like six hundred dollars or more in 1983 dollars. So it was like two thousand dollars in these dollars. By 1985, they were all popular. They all cost a hundred bucks. But these first. You know, just the innovation that's going to come out of Japan when they unlock this is, I'm excited about that. How many maker bots are there in the world right now? More than 44,000. Okay, so we're just getting started. Yeah, so, and, and and which brings me to the next question. I mean, if you had to pick, and obviously you are, you seem to be addressing all of these factors one at a time. Yeah. You know, coming out with a lower cost one. Yes. Uh, making it just obviously, you know, push button solutions, making it easier one to print something out. Um, if you had to pick one thing that is really standing in the way of true mainstream adoption, what would that be? You know, it's in people's heads. We have to, the battle that I have, my, my true battle, my the, my the thing that I'm going to war with is people's, people's feeling, people feeling like they can't do it in their head. We've made, the, the hardware's here, yeah. the software's here, the design tools, we made it easy enough for you to get started. Um, what we, have to work on is telling the story so that people feel like they can do it. Manufacturers already get this. Industrial designers, architects, you know, they just see this and, and they realize they see the price tag and we get orders like crazy from those folks because they can use that in their job and it allows them to keep their job and win over their competitors. But for the everyday person, it's really about, you know, making it so that ordinary people can get realize how much fun it is how great it feels when you can create something and share it in the world. So, so I, I got the wrap up sign, um, but I need to ask you this really quickly. Um, you know, you're, you're, you guys are a very successful startup. You guys are, every time I look at you, you're, you're much bigger. You, you came out with, with three totally new products this year. Um, I, I'm curious about the acquisition. You know, what, what, why, uh, you know, why, why take a part of that? And what, what is that really, what does that bring to the table for you as, as a small company? You know, it gives us a platform to, it, gave us a, it, gives, it really gave us a platform to not be distracted and to keep going. You know, I was on, a, I was on track where if we hadn't had merged with Stratasys, we would have had to go public and that's a, that's hard. Yeah. It's, and it's just getting harder and harder. So by merging with Stratasys, we got to go public very painlessly. And that gave us, gives us the resources to build greater adoption and, and just follow our dream even harder. And, and they've been really great about let, uh, just letting us run. And, and are there, I mean, are there, uh, you know, te I mean, they've got a lot of great technologies. They've got good patents and stuff. Is that stuff that you're going to be leveraging on the consumer side? Well, you might have seen in the MakerBot Replicator Z18, which is the, the, the 3D printer the that's ginormous huge one, yeah. that Martha Stewart fell in love with <laughs> yesterday. That, um, that that has a heated build chamber. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. That, and that's something that, that we can do because we work cool. with Stratasys. Well, uh, we are out of time. We got Orion. I'm sure that you have pinball machines to play and, and, <laughs> and car enthusiasts to talk about. I, I want to go look at the Audi booth. They always yeah. have the greatest booth, and I can't wait to see yeah, it. Yeah, there's, there's a pretty sweet Mustang over there, too, if you get oh, a yeah. chance. Just, just uh, turn around. Awesome. Bree, thank right. you so much. Great to be here. Right. Great. Nice to, you know, I don't get, normally I go on a show and I give everybody, you know, I go through my spiel. It's great to just hang out and talk. I don't cool. get to do this now. Cheers.